Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Zone 2 podcast, visually. Uh, this is episode 11, here with our guest Maggie, as well as me, Luke Hubner, Mark Sasto, and Parker Swanstrom. Uh, we've decided to do this one on video, so maybe that's interesting. You can let us know in the comments below. Um, yeah, we're joined here with Maggie. Hello, how are you today? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, would you like to introduce yourself, maybe like what you're doing right now, who you're cycling for, and your kind of like disciplines and so on? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, so currently, as of yesterday, I just flew down to uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. So that's where my team is based, my road team. I race for uh, DNA Pro Cycling Team, and we're here for a team camp, and I'll be down here for, I don't know how long, um, <laughs> the two-week quarantine. Uh, back in Canada, I don't know when I'll be able to come home, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm down here for team camp, and yeah, I race road, I race on the track with the national team and the development squad, and uh, yeah, I've been doing that since basically I was eight years old and have loved it ever since. I started out in cyclocross actually and did that and did road track and cross worlds as a first year junior and then kind of narrowed it down to track and road as I finished that year and needed to take two months off the bike because I was so burnt out. So like the balance wasn't quite there yet, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're figuring it out. <laughs> quite a resume. So, uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, sorry, we we're just, uh, we're still getting used to this that this. Um, you, uh, you mentioned worlds, so I guess we'll just dive right into it. Uh, you won a world championship. So what was that like? What's the story? Tell well, that was it. incredible. Um, yeah, I won junior track worlds in 2017. So it was a second year. Um, so yeah, the year before I... I got a bronze medal in the Omnium at Track Worlds. And I, I to totally surprised myself with that, honestly. Like, of course, you go into a race with expectations, but that was my first time racing internationally and, and against any of those other track riders, really my first track race outside of Canada. So I really had no idea what to expect. And yeah, I came away with this bronze medal and a bunch of slivers in my legs from all the crashes. <laughs> junior world's gotta love it um yeah so then the next year I'm like well bronze medal's the first year I'm so much stronger now like th this is the golden year and so in the omnium I finished with a silver medal and I was like oh man like great this is awesome but this is not the gold I've been dreaming about for the past year and I had a points race the next day and it was, it was quite a world championships. Like half the team was getting sick and we were, it was in Italy and super cool place. Um, crazy hot. And then, yeah, the points race went into it. I crashed once, I think just once in that race. <laughs> and, uh, they put me back in. Oh yeah. I finished on my teammates bike. So I crashed and broke my bike. Um, and I had taken a lap. I got almost all the sprints I was just so like gunning for that gold medal like I it was a total different side of me I'd never experienced before just that drive um to get it and yeah so within 10 laps to go I crashed and was put on a teammate's bike to finish the race and the coach is like all you got to do is finish just finish this race and don't fall again <laughs> I'm like, okay deal <laughs> got it and yeah that was it and then it was pretty surreal um getting that medal and that jersey and I mean unfortunately there were no really junior races to wear that jersey in the rest of that year so but you know close to my heart <laughs> now we just need an elite medal or an elite jersey elite rainbow stripes so we can wrap exactly. that but yeah that's that that's like insane to be honest I think that's probably like the highest achievement in cycling, I'd say. Well, I mean, like that's winning the tour, but being a world mm -hmm. champion is like biggest deal ever. I think, yeah, that's insane to have like the rainbow jersey and stuff. Did they give you a cool bike? Like, do you get a white bike with the rainbow bands? 
No. Unfortunately, no. We get a jersey, and if you want extra jerseys, you have to buy extra jerseys. So you get one jersey. <laughs> I mean, one jersey, one jersey. Like get one jersey and the gold yeah. medal. <laughs> <laughs> that's still pretty insane i didn't know you crashed as well going into it that's like and then got on the team wow yeah yeah how crashed does that, more slivers. how does that work with um changing bikes because i guess you got lapped while you changed bikes yeah so when you crash um at least at that point they might have changed exactly how many laps but you have six laps to get back in the race if they haven't neutralized it but sometimes if there's a ton of riders down and just for safety, they'll neutralize the race and you'll have a bit more time. But otherwise, yeah, you have six laps to get your stuff all back together and get back up in the race. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And the points race is like the biggest one. Did they neutralize it? Draft. They did not neutralize it for that one. No, it was just me who crashed, <laughs> took myself out on someone's wheel. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Less than the most chaotic yeah. moment ever trying to change bikes. Oh, the stress. <laughs> yeah, it's it's full chaos. It's it's kind of funny when you think about it. Like this whole track racing, you fall, your adrenaline is like pumping, so you're in all this pain, but you don't really notice it. And then your coach basically comes back, picks you up, brushes you off, like puts you on your bike, you're like go get back in that race. <laughs> it all happens like so fast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if that we've ever, I think, are there any other Canadian world champions like in anything else? Um, yeah, there have been previous world champions. Uh, I think I looked into it. Like there's five female world champions across all disciplines. Canadian. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Is that including like mountain biking and stuff though? Yeah. That's across all disciplines. So cycling. Okay. Like downhill mountain bike. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if those are disciplines really though. Anyway. <laughs> um, I don't know. They kind of don't have fired. Me. Don't know if it's really cycling. They're kind of just like, eh. anyway, um, talking about bikes, uh, you have a really cool track bike right now. At least I don't know if you still have it, but then the naked frame with like vision wheels and stuff. Yes. So that actually came about, so I broke that for the bike I was racing at world. So I broke that bike, what bike and was then, that? uh, that was a look. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I snapped that. Um, <laughs> and then two months later I had a really bad crash in Copenhagen doing a six day and, um, as well as really messing myself up. I also broke an, another look there. Uh, and so after that I was bikeless and, uh, then Sam at Naked Bikes approached me and he's like, hey, how about we build you a bike that's not going to break when you crash? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll make it pink? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I've been on El Piranha is her name, uh, titanium track bike for the past three years now. And she's been so much fun. Oh, such a blast. Yeah. And uh, the comments I get on a titanium bike I'm the only one usually out there on one and so everyone just loves it at six days especially where there's tons of people there and like the cool, it's all about the cool factor at those races <laughs> yeah I know uh is it Philippe I can't remember who has it but there's like one dude and he has like a full golden Pinarello track bike at six days it's like yep uh Elia Viviani I think has so, yeah. a golden yeah I think he has yeah. a golden track bike someone else might as well but yeah definitely him but I feel like that your bike now is just for the cool factor not for actually breaking it oh yeah yeah now it's just the cool factor <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully yeah. no uh more crashes like that no inev inevitable they'll happen but yeah yeah I'm using Riley uh well I might be if I go to um nationals or worlds I'm going to be using Riley Pickerel's look. So oh, nice. That's still in one yeah. piece. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I keep it that way. But right now I actually have a, an aluminum bike. So maybe that's okay. the, that's the way to go. By the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Um, and you've done like the actual like six days. All right, then. Uh, oh. oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good, Luke. Oh, oh. No, I was going to change the topic. So, Luke, you can, uh, you're going to stay on this then. Go for it. Yeah, I just have one more kind of comment because you said six days. I didn't know you did six days. Like, that's, that's a, mm -hmm. that's like, uh, the classics of um, track cycling, isn't it? Six days. Oh yeah. Six days were always my dream to get in to race them. I mean, you're racing at like usually between 8 p.m. and like 1 a.m. and everyone just piles into the velodrome and at least pre-COVID and drinks and parties and they set off like fireworks inside the tracks and it's basically one big party. And they said um, the fireworks inside yeah. the tracks? <laughs> They will sometimes set off fireworks inside the tracks and have like Understand. motorbikes up on the tracks with sparks coming off them and people like rappelling down the track and dancing. It's, it's wild. There's not a good way to describe it. You just got to YouTube it and see what it's like. Um, but yeah, then you also get really good points in these races uh, towards your UCI ranking. So they kind of double as like super fun, hard racing and also getting you points and yeah so I did Copenhagen six day was my first one and usually for the woman it's actually only three days that we race but they still call it a six day um and so that was the first one and then yeah last lap of the last race I crashed and completely unconscious broke my cheekbone in four places ribs punctured a lung <laughs> ended up staying in Copenhagen for two weeks after so that was my very first uh uh, six day and I was racing with Allison Beveridge and we still ended up winning it so she just did really well in that last lap that I crashed myself out of <laughs> just kind of cool finding out that we won it after all that and then yeah then I did uh, six days in Bremen and last year I did uh, Berlin six days, so that was super cool it's like one I guess the second biggest one after, before London six day so yeah, London's yeah. next goal. That would be amazing. Yeah, London. Got to yeah. represent. God save the queen. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Berlin is really cool. I, I really yeah. want to go to Berlin. I think it's the cool. I, I, this is a bit off topic, but I think Berlin is the coolest city name. I don't know why, but it just like rolls off the tongue really well, you know, like Berlin. Shortened to yeah. the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree, and the city in itself is okay. pretty rad too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting history with the whole war stuff. Anyway, um, Mark, you really are eager to change yeah. the topic. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm always eager to do everything according to Luke. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you touched on it briefly. Uh, you said that you started with cyclocross. But I mm -hmm. want to know more about like the story of how you got into cycling, because I know your dad is uh, is big into the local cycling community. So I was just wondering, um, yeah, how you got into cycling. Yeah. So when I was, well, when I was a baby, my parents uh, had a mountain bike tour, like adventure tour business. And so they used to take people down here to Utah and just all over on yeah, for mountain bike tours. And then uh, my dad's always kind of been involved in the bike world. And then when I was four, he bought a bike shop and had a team. And we ended up having uh, the team he had, like our Olympic bronze medalists on the track. They raced for him. So like Laura Brown raced for him, Steph Rorda, Jasmine, all of them. So that's kind of the crew I grew up around. And he would leave and go support whatever team he was running at races when I was like six, seven, eight years old. And I'd be up at like 6 a.m., 5 a.m., whenever he'd leave. I'm like, bring me with you. I just want to stand in the feed zone and like watch them and feed them <laughs> and all this. And just loved that atmosphere right off the get-go. And so uh, he built me up a cool little cross bike. And when I was eight, I raced that. And then I, think I developed really quickly and kind of got fast fast and so um that gave me confidence doing well when I was young and then 
I from cross got into road and then eventually track and worked with Jeremy Story, who used to be a national team coach. He was my first coach before he passed away. Um, but that really like that gave me working with him and like he had a lot of faith in me and clearly my dad did. And he's actually after Jeremy passed, he took over as my head coach and he still is. And that works out very well, a lot better than most people would expect as a father-daughter duo, uh, coach duo. And yeah, so went to track and then, yeah, Super Week was my first big road race, uh, which I did at 14 for the first time and didn't finish a single crit that first year, but hey, lining up at Gastown at that age was pretty sweet. And then like each year kept getting better and better until eventually the whole world's thing. So I've just, I think the key was, I just loved it since day one and I've always loved it. And um, even though my dad is my coach, he's never pushed me to train harder than like, like I've never felt burnt out on the sport or lost passion or love for it. So I think that's been key in me sticking with it and doing well. Sorry for this interruption, but we have to talk about our amazing sponsors at T-Wax. If you love road bikes as much as we do, you've probably heard about wax chains and the benefits that they bring. But like me, you've probably never waxed your chain because you don't know how. Well, luckily for you and me, T-Wax is here to save the day. Local legend Timothy Ho can bring you a perfectly waxed chain for your next ride. Direct message T-Wax on Instagram for more information and use code ZONE2 for 15% off their already incredibly low price. Again, direct message T-Wax on Instagram for more information and use code ZONE2 for 15% off. Now back to the podcast. All right, Parker, you, uh, you have anything to say? You seem awfully quiet. Um, I think, yeah, that's really interesting. I have a couple of questions that um, are off related to this. I think I'll wait till the conversation drifts in that direction to go there. But yeah, it was good. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Great. Um, thank you, good job, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Gastown is super sick. I really wanted to go there as well um last week because they have a lamborghini at, oh my gosh mark um they have a lamborghini as the safety car don't they i'm right, sorry they do so yeah each That's race not. like they've changed it a little um i think there's more motos now as lead and follow cars but it used to be like teslas would be one night the lambos would be another night ferraris another night for each of the different gas or super week races which is pretty sick That's that's pretty sick yeah yeah Hopefully we'll have Super Week next month, uh, next year, sorry. Next year, yeah. Yeah, because vaccinations are actually getting sped up. Are you, do you get vaccinated when you do, went down to America? Got vaccinated today. Oh, you can't see my bandage. Yeah, today got vaccinated. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fully vaccinated. Yeah. Got the one and done J&J, so nice. let's go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because I know um, Brendan Kali, he's going down to train with I can't remember the team right now but he said he was getting above vaccinated. and beyond cancer yeah above and beyond cancer oh yeah ABC mm-hmm. I really like that name um anyway yeah he was going to get vaccinated when he went down there and I've heard there's yeah. a lot of racing happening now since the vaccination rate is so high yeah so you can just walk in like really anywhere right now and get vaccinated if you're 12 and up at least here in Utah so yeah everyone's getting vaccinated and yeah we'll start racing in two weeks and basically be racing almost every weekend so there's lots so far planned down here and hopefully that all keeps happening yeah yeah it's it's good that everything's going kind of back to normal Mm -hmm. i think i don't know parker or mark have you guys um signed up to get vaccinated because i know some kids my appointment is booked pardon my appointment's booked next sunday Next Sunday Next. night. Yes. Right before the rest day, getting Bluetooth upgrades. Pretty stoked. <laughs> uh, no, I am. Um, 
I am uh, 17, and uh, I am not able to book yet. Mark, se- uh, Parker's 17, though, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, oh, I got the. Well, email, we're in a different but... health district, so maybe there's some. Yeah, maybe there's some uh, difference there. Cause, uh, yeah, I just got an email. Mark the book. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah. Hopefully, we'll go back to normal in August. I'm saying, and I think America probably by June. That's cool. Yeah. What's, what's your biggest? Yeah, masks. Thing? Masks aren't even mandatory down here anymore in these places. <laughs> I don't, when uh, were they? It makes America. me very uncomfortable. No. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah. <laughs> not used to this. Not used to people's faces. <laughs> Cover it up, guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's an interesting. I always feel kind of suspicious about anything America does now, but oh well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's like, eh, should they be doing that? Probably not. But um, yeah, I got. I sent some interesting emails to the velodrome in america because they like opened up like four months ago and i was like "Eh, should you anyway um (laughs) what's what is your like goal (laughs) right now like what are you training for okay and like obviously you're doing lots of practice races so what are those kind of all working towards yeah so the goal this year is to win the overall usa crits um so that's kind of what the goal with this team so that's their focus and uh, hopefully some road races as well when I'm down here, some bigger stage races like Joe Martin and Gila, if that happens. Um, then we have track worlds in October in Turkmenistan. So qualify for that and uh, definitely go for gun for a top eight in the Omnium would be a really big goal this year that I think after the past year of training because prior to COVID I between track and road was pretty much always on the go or prepping for some race so I never really got like since being a junior just that long endurance block to like build my engine which I've really gotten over the past year so I'm really excited to see if it's going to pay off in a race as much as I think it will (laughs) once I get out into that setting so um yeah track worlds USA Crit, so that's kind of this year's focus. And then we'll start, I guess we're three years out of 2024 and that's gonna be the goal over the next three years, get ready for that. Sorry, what was the goal for the next three years? In 2024, Paris 2024, the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for three years out of that. So Olymp- Paris, Have, was there a six day in Paris? Is there a six day in Paris? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, Paris Olympics. Yeah. I mean, that's quite a goal. I, that's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did that this morning, though, to be honest. So I don't know. Is that that goal um, this morning yeah. or did the Olympics? Sure. Olympics okay. this morning. Yeah. They sent yeah. me down and I did a few. So I don't know. Should be, maybe shooting <laughs> higher. Like there's a. Um, that's how it works. They're doing a soul, um, a galaxy. This joke is terrible. Anyway. Um, um, I have a question if we're good to go. <laughs> okay, sure. So um, maybe okay, I Mark. saw through good. a quick, um, I quickly, I forgot to jot down um, where it was. So I looked and um, it says Eddie Merck's Velodrome. So I'm going to assume Belgium. But um, you've been racing internationally in Europe recently. So really, um, how would you say you felt going back into a real competitive, aggressive race environment after so much time off? And how would you say like, the sort of the pack dynamic and like if you felt sort of different energy from your competitors with the increased possibly excitement and nerves from them as well yeah so I was in Belgium last month uh only there for a week I was basically in quarantine for three weeks between uh over there and then coming home with a two-week quarantine but yeah that was quite an experience after 16 months of nothing basically that was a bit of a shock to the system and all the racers or pretty many of the racers over in Europe have been racing because there's been all the classics and all of that so they've still been racing their bikes so there are very few of us who haven't really touched a race in a long time and um, national teams 
there's not going to be a ton of big track events this year. And this one over in Belgium had really good points. So the national teams were basically sending all their riders. So there was their Olympic riders who were top form gearing up in their final Olympic prep. Um, there's like the alternate rider, the third tier. So tons of riders there. Everything had a qualifier. Speeds were almost equivalent to last year's world championships. So just going into that after 16 months of nothing was a little like, whoa, what is this? Like <laughs> a bike race. I kind of forgot how to do this. Um, so that was kind of the first day or so of racing. There were three days of it. But then, yeah, by the end of the weekend, I just getting back into the vibe of it. And it, it comes back so quickly when you're out there. I was actually super nervous. I was probably the most nervous I've been going into a race just because I had no idea how I was going to feel, what to expect from the racing. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> nothing like just being thrown into the deep end for the first one back. And yeah, just being in Belgium again and in that atmosphere was pretty cool, even though we we're basically quarantined the whole time. But in Belgium, you can break quarantine to train, race, and go to the grocery store. So it was fine. Pretty solid. Belgium, gosh, what a country. Is like, are people just swerving a lot more, do you say now? Like not being able to hold their line, is that kind of what people are lacking? Because I've heard there's lots of crashes now, especially in America from all these racing again, because everyone's super strong from like base building and turbo training, but then you can't really hold your line in a pack and so on. Is that kind of what's happening? Well, I'll be interested to see when we get into racing down here, if that's the case. Um, but over there, like most of those riders have been racing the classics, uh, spring classics on the road. So they've all they're all back into it. And I don't think we had a single crash in a race, which is pretty amazing for a track race. That rarely happens like that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, I was wondering something. Uh, so I know that you're very big into yoga. So I was just, uh, yeah, I'm just curious. How did you get into that? Um, so, I started that, I, I got some classes to a yoga studio out in Maple Ridge where I live. And I figured uh, just like most people who start yoga, I'm like, hey, I can't touch my toes. So <laughs> we probably should fix that and do some stretching. That's kind of how I got interested in it. And then I went and it was just like another way to challenge myself. I, I, I love challenging myself and approached it with totally the wrong intention of yoga just being super competitive and <laughs> oh look what I can do <laughs> oh yeah I can flip myself upside down or like I, I don't know <laughs> it, total wrong idea but it worked for me and I then got obsessed with like headstands and handstands and trying all these weird yoga poses that look super cool um and just had a lot of fun with it and I was finding like the more flexible and the more mobile I was, the better I was feeling on the bike. Like knock on wood, I've barely had any injuries that haven't been crash related, um, which is pretty amazing, like between the bike and the gym. So I credit a lot of that to like just yoga and having that flexibility and mobility and stability that it's given me. And then then like the whole mental meditation side started coming into play um, for me. And I, it, yeah, I found it was something that was really good at just increasing my concentration and my ability to focus before a race, during a race, after a race, all of that. Um, so we got into that side of the whole yoga and then I'm like, hey, well, we're already loving it this much. Might as well do the whole yoga teacher training course. <laughs> So that was the next step. <laughs> um, and mostly it was for myself because I find yoga was one of those things that no matter where I was in the world or how much I was traveling, it was the one thing that would always stay consistent and I could always bring, bring with me and like something I could do before bed no matter where I was. Um, so I just wanted to know, learn more about it, learn more how to advance my practice. And I, I coach spin as well. So I knew I loved 
teaching and talking to people. Um, so then, yeah, eventually I want to do more yoga teaching, but that's kind of my yoga story. Nice. I definitely need to do yoga. I can't even touch my knees right now. So. Can't even touch your knees? <laughs> that is a problem. I, I can't. But no, I you can't need more than yoga to help that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, no, it's just because my legs are so big, it just gets in the way. So I just can't touch my knees. If I'm blaming it on. Fair enough. Sure. Those yoga um, quads, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yoga. Is it good for like mindset going into races to be able to like kind of chill out and drop your heart rate and so on? Does it help I a lot with that? Do you so. think? I think it definitely does. And for me, like be like, yeah, bringing my heart rate down and being chill and just kind of like focusing through my warm up and having that routine, but being able to laugh and just chat with teammates and going into a race like that definitely works better for me. Um, and I, I can be pretty like ADHD a lot of the time and struggle to focus. And especially when it comes to time trials or long efforts. So just being able to concentrate through those efforts was actually the biggest thing I found the meditation and mindfulness and even the breath work. Like I do a ton of breath work through it too, learning how to properly breathe and maximize that. Um, I think that's been super good for efforts and hopefully races i've really done most of the mindfulness and breath work over the past year so for training it's been great so far yeah i've been working yeah. on that as well found it helped a lot with um especially with like longer solo stuff like long training rides by yourself like five hours plus good have you ever yeah. done a ride shorter than that parker i do not think so <laughs> i don't think he's ever ridden less than five hours if he does he'll combust going up for a five-hour recovery ride guys be back yeah exactly yeah, oh yeah riley <laughs> riley was really amused one day um because i did a recovery ride and it was three hours it was 100 kilometers my average power was 217 with uh blocks of 300 watts um but i, I titled it recovery ride so it's a recovery ride that's how it works uh, what more can you do what more can you do? Like if Strava says it's recovery. Yeah. It's recovery. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Exactly. That's right. No, I I, uh, I was thinking about changing my uh, my Everesting, which I Everested by the way to our wonderful audience. I did Everest. I was t- thinking of uh, changing my Everesting to say recovery ride. <laughs> the sixteen hour ride. <laughs> That'd be pretty. Good. I was so yeah. tempted. Wait, it wasn't sixteen Sunday hours. Ride. But yeah, yeah, you should have. Parker did three hundred k. Yeah, the other day. It's a long recovery ride for him. It's a very long recovery ride. Three hundred k. Oh my gosh, I, I've definitely never done three hundred k in a day. It, kind of just the night before we were planning to do two fifty, and then I um I text my friend who I can say here, Caleb Bender, great guy. I text him like guess what he's like what I was like we're only 50k away from 300 he's like I've been thinking the same thing I was like do you want to just do this and he's like yes for bragging rights we will do this and then we did and then I ended up sitting on his wheel for most of the time but that's okay <laughs> but you did it that's all that matters <laughs> I help yeah if you do it with a domestique it's okay I'm gonna come join you guys sometime and I'm just gonna sit third wheel it's gonna be my sure. life and I'm short. You guys are like both six foot, and I'm like five foot, so it'll He's work. He's five eleven. I'm six three, but yeah. yeah. So technically, when the rider behind is taller than the rider <laughs> in front, they technically get like a one percent aerodynamic advantage, supposedly. So I I was helping. I don't know what YouTube videos you've been watching. Um. Anyway, <laughs> uh, do do any education or work right now, or is it just purely cycling currently? No, so I did totally overwhelm myself during the pandemic. (laughs) Got a little excited with the break from racing and um, worked part-time for this athlete charity called CanFund as like social media and interviewing athletes. Um, That was a super cool gig. And then I took on a full course load at Douglas College. So I started my Associate of Science. I've been kind of doing online courses like while traveling for the past 
little while, but usually one at a time. So this is my first like, full course load experience. So I did that for the fall and um, winter semester. And then I'm just doing, finishing up one course through another institution and doing one course now through the summer. But yeah, so education and work has all been incorporated and a year of different experiences, which has been cool, but yeah. <laughs> Balance was not my friend over the past year. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a hard a lot of, I think I can definitely relate and I know a lot of our audience can for sure. No, yeah. you can't, you like do school online. Everyone was doing school online this year. Exposed. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't, this this guy's doing like six hours a day. Don't talk to me about not having time. Anyway, um, I it, it's a little bit. It's not having time for school. You see, so, <laughs> so, cycling, school, everything else. Well, Five yeah, hour ride, six issue. hours of like school. Riding. This is not a good advice. Yeah. <laughs> good advice. <laughs> It's always when you have too much time, you can always find ways to waste it. So that's really been. It's true. I, I do find I'm more productive. Things. Yeah. Busier I am, I do find I'm more productive with that. When you have less time, you find more ways to fit stuff in. Sometimes, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Very cool. Mark Parker, do you have any more questions? I don't right now. I think I'm good. I think I covered my um, my sheet. It's okay. Well, I think we could. Alrighty. Well, and short and sweet. Short and sweet. We'll let, we'll let you get back to winning world championships. All and right. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Okay, then with that. Um, I guess we'll wrap up. So thank you, Maggie, for coming on. Where can our audience find you on social? Oh, Instagram would be the best place. Instagram at Maggie Cole's okay. um, Oh my gosh, this Wi-Fi is really hey, bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Relax, guys. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching, too, for our first ever video podcast um reminder uh follow us on instagram at zone two podcast and uh subscribe to the youtube channel which we now have where you might be watching this i guess that's it thanks everyone for listening bye thank you thank you